Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, maybe your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters. Beerus, Universe 7's Destroyer, and Antipops, the darkness to the light of the universe. Which of these two uber-powerful deities will win in a fight to the death? This is Universes. Beerus is the Destroyer deity of Dragon Ball's 7th universe. His job includes keeping balance by destroying planets and anything else he sees that needs to be destroyed in order to make room for the new. He has so much power, but as you can imagine, being this strong for millions upon millions of years makes it boring when there's nobody who can challenge you. Hundreds of millions of years was apparently long enough though, as Beerus finally had a premonition dream about fighting this special kind of Super Saiyan, another deity born of the Saiyan race that could match his power. And of course, it turned out to be Goku. Not like there were many choices to choose from when it comes to Saiyans, but yeah. After meeting the Super Saiyan, Beerus' life changed forever as they grew pretty close and ended up in many brand new universe-threatening challenges, and as such, Beerus would need to be prepared to fight again. Beerus was trained in martial arts by the Angel Whis, and has gained millions of years worth of experience from it. Most of his attacks can do insane amounts of damage. Also, since Beerus is a deity, he has a special divine key that makes it hard for people without the same key to detect when he's coming. He can fly, create balls of world-destroying energy called the Super Energy Sphere, and even strengthen it with his Wrath ability. Beerus also has the unique property of being immune to gag characters in Toon Force, as Aureli couldn't even harm him. This crazy cat also knows how to attack pressure points, rendering enemies unconscious with a few taps of his fingers. He knows some ceiling spells as he trapped the old Kai in the Z-Sword, and he can redirect attacks using his own enemy's key against them. Then we come to one of Beerus' most iconic moves, Hakai. By simply holding out his palm and muttering this word, he can completely erase a being from existence, even down to the very soul as he has used it on a ghost before. One last little detail though is that he has a tail. It's a useful extra appendage that gives him a bit more to fight with in melee combat. This massive arsenal definitely makes him worthy of being a deity. As mentioned before, Beerus is clearly able to destroy planets with ease. He can do so with large energy balls or tiny projectiles that resemble an atom that he casually kicks around and plays with like it's some kind of toy. He can also simply tap half the planet away with the tip of his fingers. But then we take a massive step upwards once we get to his battle with Goku. It was a brutal and intense fight, and some of the clashes coming from it created shockwaves throughout the entire universe. If the battle had continued, the entire universe itself would have been destroyed. Beerus is also superior to characters like Jiren and Talpo, who can shake the world of Void, a supposedly infinite space. When it comes to speed, Beerus was able to travel to a planet at about three-fourths the speed of Whis. This means Beerus' speed could possibly reach up to trillions or even quadrillions of times faster than light, considering Whis can cross the universe in a fairly short amount of time. This is definitely one overpowered kitty cat. Let's see if Antipops has anything that could defeat him. Every 14 billion years, the universe balances itself with creations of light and darkness. The light being Megacranus, also known as Pops, a jolly good fellow who wouldn't hurt a fly. The darkness being Malum Cranus, also known as Anti-Pops, a jolly bad fellow who wants nothing more than universal destruction. At the end of this 14 billion year cycle, Pops and Anti-Pops fight in a battle to determine the fate of the universe, with the result always being its destruction and reset. This has been an endless cycle repeating over and over multiple times with slightly different things each time. No matter how many tries it takes though, Antipops will not give up until he's able to get his way. I mean, with how many times they've battled, it's possible he'd likely to escape the draws and come out on top eventually. And he would have done so this time if it weren't for all of Pops' friends chipping in. So let's take a look at what he had to get the job done. As Pops is the light and Antipops is the darkness, Antipops' main power obviously has to do with destruction. He can form a white aura around himself and fire beams of who knows what that can completely erase things from existence. He's able to fly, he's a master martial artist and possesses several unique powers. He has transmutation, able to turn objects and energy into weapons for himself, telekinesis, wind manipulation, and longevity. Characters with longevity do not have immortality. They still age and all that. The process is just extremely slow. This isn't all Antipops has though. This is simply what he can do in his base form. His powered up celestial form is where things get real. 
He grows into an absurdly large size and gains a whole new arsenal of abilities. He can teleport, become aware of the fourth wall, and warp reality itself at extreme levels. He can even do something as simple as turning a comet into a weapon, or something insane like ripping the fabric of reality itself. He does have a weakness, though. It's hard for Anti-Pops to detect the energy of others, as he was unable to find Pops, Mordecai, and Rigby when they were all teleported even just a short distance away. Get your eyes checked, man. Anyways, you'd better hope Anti-Pops doesn't see you because he is stupidly powerful. Even in his base form, he's a monster. He scales to base Pops who can dart through planets like butter, and it took an entire supernova to destroy his base form. In his celestial form, it gets even more absurd. He grows to the size of hundreds of planets and can shatter them with a touch. He can even survive getting an entire solar system punched out of his face. It doesn't stop there though. As mentioned before, the fight between Pops and Anti-Pops affects the entire universe. With a single punch, Anti-Pops is not only to destroy the universe, but its timeline as well, while Pops' punch is what resets it. When it comes to speed, Anti-Pops is superior to the baby ducks with their galaxy-sized sword who can react and travel at over trillions of times the speed of light. And obviously, Anti-Pops can scale the Pops, who has infinite speed from being able to move inside a void that he himself created. Pretty insane, both Beerus and Anti-Pops. But there's only room for one destroyer, so let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Bad show. Bad show indeed. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Bringing you the next Universe's Prediction on Keyblade Shadow's channel. We got Keyblade Shadow in the house. Yeah, what's up, people? We're bringing you a prediction. I don't do these often, but we're going to do one this time anyway. Yeah, it's anti Pops versus Lord Beerus, a destroyer. We got CDH B Sage. Yo, what's up, boy? And we got Simple Star. Hey guys, it's Simple Star. Now, real quick, who you going with today, Keyblade? There is hands down. Now, what's your couple... Give me, like, two reasons why you think that real quick. Well, for, well, for one, I've seen Beerus, like, completely decimate people, like, on the same level as anti-pop pop, and, well... Beerus is, Beerus is a lot faster from what I know, and as we discussed earlier, he could honestly just take him out with a few, few Hakai shots. Definitely not one straight away, but a few, a good, a good round of, of a few, then it could just be all over. Yeah, I definitely think a few Hakai might do some damage, because like, obviously they're around the same level from what I've seen, so it's not going to one-shot him. That'd be a no-limits fallacy, and obviously it'd take more than that. And uh, what about you, CDH? Real quick, what's your what's your thoughts, real fast? Um, I think Beerus might win, but I would give it. They both have good utility. So, but I heard earlier from Anti Pop, but like I think Beerus may take it because like he has better speed speech than Anti Pop. No, he was still able to beat Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Kaioken Blue Goku. He's still coming in that, but like, Ultra Instinct Stage 3 might have been on part with Beerus and Master Ultra Instinct is superior Beerus, so... Yeah, that's what's implied, yeah. Win. Yeah, I get that. I, so simple, real quick, what about you real fast? Um, I think Beerus cause speed and like he's fought people like um anti pups similar to that. So I do think anti pups could have a good chance with like his other abilities. Yeah, like he were they're near the same level now, I'll tell you me real fast, like I feel like anti pops obviously he has a universal fee, pro obviously place him a universal plus, but I'd do the same for Beerus because Beerus and Goku were gonna destroy a macrocosm. Beerus wasn't using, you know, the certain... He was lying about what percent he was using. He could casually nullify universal levels of energy with some random per small percent of his power. And, like, obviously that 70% has been retcon for the other thing. And, like... And then you had Beerus and Champa. Okay. And you had Beerus and Champa about to destroy both Macrocosm 6 and 7. So those are three universal size realms. And he one-shot full-power Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta in the manga... And he's stronger than... He scales above Topo, who violently shook the entire world of Void. So, I feel like... 
And then the speed he can tra travel yeah. like out of that nebula in a short period of time, and like he's a percentage of, you know, he's obviously on par with the other gods of destruction who are all massively FTL and a percentage of Whis in a, his own right. So I feel like there could be an argument made for both, but I feel like at the end of the day, Beerus, like you say, might have better reflexes, combat speed, and edge out in speed. They're near the same level of power. I might give Beerus the edge because. They were going to destroy two macrocosms at not even full power, and then the, a few good Hakai's, and it's, this could go either way. But I feel I guess Beerus could slightly edge out six out of ten times. Let us know what you all think down below. Hey. As always, have a blessed day, guys. Peace. Bye. And the results are in. The winner is. Anti-pops, and I'll get right to the reasons why before the comments come flooding in. Don't want to waste time. After this first point, all the rest won't feel very overwhelming, but it's the one people are looking forward to most, so let's discuss the universe busting. Obviously both have done this, well Beerus had the potential to do this, but anyways there are two big differences here. The first one being that Anti-Pops can do it with a single punch, while Beerus required three at the very least. The second big difference is that Beerus was only going to destroy the universe, while Anti-Pops destroyed the universe and its timeline. That's something on the level of Grand Zeno, who Beerus is downright terrified of. Anti-Pops destroying time and space while Beerus only destroys space puts him on a completely different dimension of power that Beerus hasn't quite reached yet. Then of course there's their trillions of times faster than light universal travel speed, which Anti-Pops also jumps ahead in once you bring in his infinite speed scaling from Pops in the Void. Being able to move and travel in a place where space and time doesn't exist is pretty impressive, you gotta admit. So right there, we just proved Anti-Pops has the clear stat advantage, and no, Beerus' Hakai wouldn't be any help to him. The Hakai has been physically overpowered multiple times by mortals, and with Anti-Pops' powers, this would be no problem for him. The only clear advantage I can think of Beerus having is Anti-Pops' inability to sense and detect energy. So even if Beerus had regular key, he'd still be able to hide from Anti-Pops for a good bit, but hiding is definitely no way to win this fight. Aside from the Hakai though, which is already proven ineffective, Beerus doesn't have many tools in his arsenal to work with. Yeah, he has a lot of different moves, but they all share the same properties of doing standard physical damage. Anti-Pops has superior erasing moves and high levels of reality warping that even include breaking the fourth wall. Also, before you ask, Beerus' immunity to Toon Force would not play into this battle. Anti-Pops being a cartoon character doesn't automatically mean he has Toon Force. With all this said, the winner is... Anti-Pops. I wish I could take it all back. You can try. You and I together. Brother. Get ready for the next battle.